Hello, you all have probably come to know me as Pastor Bill. And I'm Pastor Ann, and things look a little different around here today. If you're a regular chapel at home, we have two special guests, a lion and a lamb. Hmm, I wonder why. And, and they're getting along. What a vision of hope and peace for us at this time. Hmm. Something else is different as we turn from the end of the year into a new church year. Uh, we're going to invite you to listen to some voices from the United Church of Christ around our country. Uh, some conference leaders and other folks will share music and scripture with us. And we will be worshiping with you as we uh, listen to those voices. So join us today and thank you for tuning in. Thanks for coming along. Gather near, you gifted people, you beautiful people, you wonderful people. Gather near, for you are beloved. Gather even closer if you feel you are not. Come gather in this place, no place sanctuary, so that we can celebrate and honor the God of every place. We are both near and far, close and distant, together and apart, yet known and loved and treasured and held and blessed by a God who created us as a gift to the world. Gathered in this time of sanctuary, may we recognize and celebrate the gifts that are present here and ask for God's guidance as we discern how to share them. Gather near, you gifted people, you beautiful people, you wonderful people. Gather near here, you who are beloved. Gather even closer if you feel you are not, because the good news for today is that you are. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. God is with us. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. God is with us. We
welcome to the Young in Spirit. We have a challenge for you today. We would like you to write a prayer, and this can be a group project. You can ask someone or phone a friend or text a friend, and what we're going to be doing is writing some prayers that have um, special words in them, especially that we think of this time of year. So you might, for example, pick the word thanks or thanksgiving or another word like hope. And we invite you to write a prayer using the first letter of each that is in, e that is in the word that you choose. So we'll give you some examples up here on the screen. Thank you for this time. Thank you for writing your prayers. If you would like to share your prayers with us, please let us know and we would like to know what you are praying about. Thanks be to God. Amen. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless servant, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This New Testament reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, and it's known as the Parable of the Talents. It has traditionally been interpreted as a message about responsible stewardship, since a talent is a rather large sum of money. The theme of the departing and returning master was dear to the early Christian community because it reminded them of Jesus' departure and expected return. The story has undergone several transformations in its journey from Jesus's original parable to the version that we now read in Matthew's gospel. 
a careful reading raises some disturbing elements that are often overlooked. One such element is the character of the master in the story. The absent master is called hard or severe. We can tell in his treatment of a third servant that he's a severe man. I think this calls into question the understanding by some that the master represents God. Also, to the Torah abiding Jews to whom this story would have, have originally been told, the master's approval of receiving interest on the loans would have characterized him as no respecter of God's laws, laws which strongly discourage profit making from loans. There can be no doubt that when Jesus told the story, the morality of the absent master was questionable. It's therefore not helpful to identify the master as either Jesus or God. A more likely interpretation is that the hard master in this story is a characterization of the harsh social and economic realities that people faced at that time. The primary focus of this parable should be the behavior of the third servant who does nothing with the talents that he's been given. What he does because of his fear is what is brought into, into question by Jesus's story. He's rebuked for not acting boldly despite the danger. Cautious maintenance of the status quo is not applauded here in this story. The early church would have found this story very meaningful because of the persecution they faced. I think it must be just as meaningful today as we are called to think about how we worship together while keeping the body of Christ, the community, healthy and safe. The story is a call not to lose heart, but to act boldly for Christ. It provides both a social criticism of unjust times and a warning against being too cautious and encourages boldness and creativity in the face of systemic injustice. So that's the scripture. And I don't know about you, but this parable by Jesus has always been one that's left me, you know, scratching my head. <laughs> it seems to suggest some kind of investment crisis. The wealthy man gives each of three servants a very large sum of money. And believe me, it was a whole lot of money. A talent was a sum of money equal to roughly 23 years of wages for a day laborer. In today's currency, the sum granted to each servant would be somewhere at about, well, at least a half a million dollars. Like I said, a whole lot of money. And the servant who is not seen as trustworthy is the one who simply buried the whole shebang and returned to his master exactly what he had been given. And the master calls him wicked and lazy. He did not do anything with the talents that the master had provided him with. So he's cast out where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, as I read this parable, I couldn't help but apply our modern definition of the word talents as gifts, not necessarily of cash, but rather of abilities, true gifts from God. Perhaps we can think of our talents as God's own currency. Reading the parable from that viewpoint, it seems that the untrusty, uh, untrustworthy servant is the one who does nothing with the gifts that he's been given. The first two servants take what they've been given and use it to increase the gift many times over. As I was thinking about talents as gifts from God, I couldn't help but think that all of us have gifts, that each of us has talents that God has graced us with, Maybe our gifts are not as extraordinary as the gifts that some others may have, but God-given talents of our own all the same. And I think that we all are called by God to use our gifts, our God-given talent, to move this world just a little bit further toward the kind of world that God envisioned at the creation. It seems to me today that this reading that speaks to us of talents 
the gifts that we've been given by God, I think they challenge us to look at what we're doing with our talents, what we're doing with our gifts. So I'd like you to take a piece of paper, really, right now, take a piece of paper and write down what your gifts might be. And when you've got one or two listed, I want you to hang it on your refrigerator. And when you get a chance, talk about it with the person or the people uh, with whom you are sharing your safe space or phone a friend. Perhaps the two of you might strategize about how your gift could be used to build up the kingdom of God, how your gifts could be shared with the church in a way that would benefit this body of Christ. I'd like you to remind yourselves daily that God has gifted you and that your gifts can be used to partner with God to create the beloved community. You know, it seems as if we are all living in a time when God's kingdom seems so far away. You know, when things will be as the prophet Isaiah envisioned them, when the wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. You know, we won't need to worry about hunger or oppression or racism in this world of God's kingdom. We won't have to worry about senseless gun violence in the streets perpetrated by our neighbors with too many guns or by the forces who take an oath to protect and serve. A time when all lives will matter because black lives finally do. You may think that what we do with our talents can't possibly make a difference in the world. But just imagine what the world would be if everyone used their God-given talent to make the world a better place. At that time, when that comes, Isaiah's prophecy will not seem so fantastical. As you leave this worship service, let us all remember with thankful hearts all that God has given to us and let us rededicate ourselves to building up God's realm here on earth. Amen.
Let us pray. I thank you, love, for the gift of this day, for its possibilities, for its challenges, for all that will draw me to you and your creation in the work and rest that is your gift to me. I thank you that the breath of life flows in and out of me as a gift not of my making, but of your design, that I may remember your inspiration and call in each moment of each second of each hour. Let me now attend with a thankful heart to your transforming work, that I may be molded into whatever expression of love you desire. And in this, may your highest hope be my deepest desire, formed by you, O love, for the healing of the world. Amen. We are so thankful for all of the wider church family for making the effort. Um, years ago, Bill and I used to um, spend some time a week every summer at uh, Camp Dubois in Southern Illinois, and they always had international counselors every summer. And we always said when you um, don't can't get out to travel the world, sometimes the world comes to you. So on this day, we're grateful for the wider family coming to visit us in this special way. Absolutely. We invite you now into the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now receive this benediction. May we have grace to perceive the bounty of a generous God. May we have open hands and open hearts to share that abundance with abandon. May we have courage to see and not look away from the injustices that rob our siblings of their birthright as precious children of God. May we have the will to make the changes God desires for all God's people and for the healing of the earth. Let us not grow weary, and when we do, may God join us together so that many hands might make light work. And now may the blessings of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you all. Amen. <laughs>